And welcome back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts. And I have two of my favorite analysts right here. <laughs> Steve Gill and Jerry Maynard had two favorite guests, my two favorite analysts. Let's talk about Occupy Nashville. We saw what happened in the middle of the night. The state changed the rules in the middle of the protest, which is their right, now requiring permits. But then comes in after saying they were going to wait a day and starts arresting these people. The night court commissioner says you can't do that. Unfair? Well, I, th I think there's a couple things that really bother me about this whole system. First of all, the Tea Party has been required to pay for mm -hmm. permits, pay for using the, the legislative plaza, tens of thousands of dollars in the past. These folks are occupying the plaza and paying nothing. We're seeing the same thing in Richmond, Virginia. The Tea Party is, is forced to pay for using the same facilities the that the Occupy Wall Street crowd are getting for free. So they ought to either charge everybody or charge nobody, and they need to be sending some money back to the Tea Party crowd. The second thing is this should be a protest area, but it shouldn't be a camp out overnight area. Uh, and I think that you shouldn't have to get a permit to go have a protest in front of the Capitol. That's kind of against the First Amendment by, by itself. But when you start pitching tents and living there, then I think you have a big problem. That's different than, than a protest. That's different than coming out and speaking your mind. But if you're going to enforce that, you need to enforce it against the homeless and say that they can't sleep in state parks, city parks, or on legislative plaza either. The problem now is a mishmash yep. of inconsistency of charging some people, not others, enforcing the law, not enforcing. Let's set the rules and apply it to everybody. Because it's public property, that's the problem that we have right now. You cannot say to the homeless, you've got to get out because it is public land. Therefore, you cannot say to the occupiers, you've got to get out. And then when they change the rules, Bob, the problem is they never, got, never gave them notice and an opportunity to comply with the rules that they changed. That's why the judge threw them out, threw, uh, allowed them to right. go free. And so what we have to do is if the state troopers in the state says, we're going to give you only this amount of time to hear, be here to protest, you've got to give them an opportunity to get out in a legal way, lawful way, and in a way that is dignified for everybody. I think what happened is they were too heavy-handed. And I think the judge rep uh, recognized they were too heavy-handed, and that's why he released all of those persons. I think you hit it on the head. There needs to be a policy that adapts for everybody. If you're the Tea Party, for these protesters, everybody follows the same rules, which is what they're trying to do. But they may have gone too far, like you said. It is a public place. You should be able to protest without going through a bunch of hoops that prevent the First Amendment right to protest. The difference, though, where I would have with Jerry is that I, just because it's public property doesn't mean you have the right to live there. And whether you're homeless, whether you're pitching a tent, I don't think you have a right to you know, pitch a tent up on the, mm -hmm. on the uh, Capitol, on the grounds, and just decide, I've decided I'm going to live here. There is a difference in that and the protesting in the First Amendment. You don't have a First Amendment right to live on that property because it's everybody's property, not your ability just to take it. Will I think this the, cause an escalation, do you think, now that people are going to be angry because they're arrested and then turn free? And there's always going to be some people who want to get arrested, let's be honest. Well, one of the things about protesting, as Steve said, you don't get permission to protest. You protest because you want to show the powers that be that we are here to stand for our First Amendment rights. It's like the Civil Rights Movement never got a permit before they went to protest. And that's where the fundamental difference. I believe that they should be able to camp because it is public property. They are using the First Amendment rights by being there at night. So they can be there at 10 o'clock a.m., but they can't be there at 10 o'clock. Like PM, I don't see the difference, and that's why I think they should be allowed to be there and occupy because they are protesting without paying a permit fee, and it doesn't matter whether it's midnight or 12 noon. Do you have a problem? The state told us, told the protesters on Thursday, okay, here's the rules, but we're not going to implement them until Friday night, 10 o'clock, when the, cur when the uh, curfew will go into effect, and then came in at 3 o'clock in the morning Friday and said, no, we decide we're going to do it now. Yeah, again, I think that's the inconsistency. And I think, you know, again, I'm not sure what the, what the judge wants to see in terms of how much notice of these are the new rules. We're going to impose a curfew. But certainly sometime next week, that's going to be enough notice, and then we're going to see if the rules get applied. Again, I think the Tea Party out there ought to be out there today demanding the repayment of the $10,000 or so they paid to rent the uh, legislative plaza. You know, again, if we're going to charge some people, we either got to charge these guys or they need to give the money back. The Poor People's Movement. Do we remember that in the mm -hmm. 60s when uh, Dr. Martin Luther King led this march? And then they went and they occupied on the Washington Monument. They did not get a permit. They did not get permission. They didn't pay any costs or fees. It's public federal land. And guess what? The people own the land. Just like the state, uh, citizens of, da uh, of, of Davidson County, we own that land. Or if the state, we own the land because we're residents of the state of Tennessee. Therefore, they have the right to occupy that land just like they did in the 60s during the pe Poor People's Movement when they occupied for months with tents and everything like that, protesting poverty here in this nation. President, this week, used executive order to implement new guidelines for students to repay their student loans. He went around Congress to do it, saying that he couldn't get it through Congress. He has the authority through executive power. Some say he's using too many executive orders. I think it's a great political move. I don't like the precedent because I, wouldn't like, I would not like George Bush mm -hmm. <laughs> using executive order. I'm going to be fair. But I think it's a great political move because he is saying to the country, Congress is a Congress of no. The House will not do anything. Which includes uh, the Democrats. Well, I say where well, now the Republicans <laughs> are the ones that are holding up and the Tea Party are the 
the ones who are saying no. So President Obama made a great move politically to say, you know what, they're not going to do anything. We're going to do something. We're going to help the students out. Uh, Jerry's clearly forgotten that the Democrats still control the U.S. Senate with Majority Leader Harry Reid. Uh, the problem is that the Republicans have passed 15 bills to deal with energy policy, regulatory policy, a whole host of other job bills that are not being voted on by the Democrats in the Senate. I say let's vote all 15 up or down in the Senate, then let President Obama either be the president of no or yes and pass the 15 bills in many cases that will pass in the Senate if Democrats are given an opportunity to vote for them. The problem with this student loan deal is, as Jerry pointed out, the president doing it by fiat just because he doesn't like the way they'll vote in Congress is not what our founders intended. There is a checks and balances, and him skirting that beside because he decides they are not going to vote on what I want to is the wrong thing to do. This bill will also save the average college student about $10 a month. It's ridiculous. Then on the other end, those that go to the elite public or private schools instead of the public schools, it's going to cost taxpayers as much as a million dollars to pay off these loans. Either he's sticking it to the taxpayers or he's not producing any results, which is unfortunately typical Steve of this Gilles president. Steve Gilgeri-Mayer, got to leave it there. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.